I'm here today with David Gillespie. David's the author of new book, The Sweet Poison Quit Plan, which is all about giving up sugar in order to lose weight and feel better. So we've got David here to set the record straight on artificial sweeteners. So David. Okay, so there's lots of things that we're told we can eat instead of sugar. You know, people say, oh, you know what, I don't eat sugar, I only eat honey now. Well, honey sugar. Uh, and so is golden syrup and molasses and all of those sorts of syrupy types of things are all just sugar. They all have exactly the same biochemical makeup as sugar and your body treats them exactly the same way. So honey is not an alternative to sugar um, and neither is something that is promoted as a healthy alternative, something like agave syrup, which is actually 90% fructose. So it has more of the dangerous part of sugar than sugar itself, which is only 50% fructose. So this is definitely not an alternative. I used to put agave all over everything, thinking I was being really healthy. And uh, and you sh and you would because look at the label; it says it's healthy. So why wouldn't you believe it? Now, some of the things that we're told are great substitutes for sugar are not because our body metabolizes them in exactly the same way as sugar. So whilst it doesn't contain sugar, things like this that say they're sugar free are strictly saying the truth, telling us the truth, it is sugar free, but what it contains instead is a whole bunch of sugar alcohols like sorbitol, mannitol, isomalt, maltitol. All of those are treated by the body just like sugar. So you might as well eat the sugar if you're going to eat those things. They are not an alternative. Now there are some alternatives that you can use instead of sugar. So things like stevia, um, which is what's in this product. This is half erythritol, half stevia. Both of those are what I would call uh, methadone for sugar addicts. Those are things that you can use to get you through the withdrawal period and you may even still want to use after that if you still want that little taste of sweetness. Uh, so those things are fine. Uh, this uh, is also a good alternative. This is just the glucose half of sugar. So one half of sugar, glucose, the other half, fructose. The glucose half is fine. It's what's in these things. You can also buy it in packets that look like caster sugar uh, and they're sold in places that sell brewing supplies and it's called dextrose. You can use that in your cooking instead of sugar. Well, ice creams made with dextrose taste exactly the same as ones made with sugar. Cakes taste less sweet. That doesn't matter to someone who's given up sugar because most things taste very sweet once you've gotten sugar out of your diet. So just to clarify, some of these things here don't have any calories, but are you saying that they could contribute to weight gain? It will have exactly the same health effect as just consuming the sugar in the first place. This is a real problem because this type of product is something that people often use for breath fresheners and things like that, and it is almost impossible to find one of those that isn't sweetened with, with one of those sugar alcohols. So what about diet foods? Diet food usually means low fat. When they take the fat out of a food, they replace it with sugar. So when you're talking about foods that are designed for dieters, they're often very high in sugar. This one, for example, 23% sugar and that's designed for dieters. Don't be fooled into buying diet foods or light foods. They're often higher in sugar than their full fat equivalents. Thank you, David. So that's really good advice. And for more practical tips to help you give up sugar, take a look at David's book, The Sweet Poison Quick Plan.